In this lesson, I'll show you how to compute the polar moment of inertia using the disk method. We've already done the same application problem shown right here using the shell method, although this time I'll show you a second method known as the disk method because by using it, it often results in an integral that is easier to evaluate than that obtained by the shell method. You can compare the solutions after we're done. So the same question reads as before. The first quadrant area under the curve y squared is equal to 8x from x is equal to 0 to 2 is rotated about the x-axis. Use the disk method to find the polar moment of inertia of the paraboloid generated. Let's discuss the formula for a moment. We have i is equal to m times pi over 2 times the integral between a and b, your lower and your upper bound, for the integrand r to the power of 4 dh, where m represents the mass per unit volume, that's not given in our question, dh represents the change in height of the disks, and r represents the disk radius. So I want you to pretend that we have these disks running along the horizontal of this three-dimensional shape, and I'll put up an image for more clarity. The radius of each of these disks will vary depending on where you are along the x. So this disk will have a bigger radius than, let's say, the one next to it. Since we don't know the radius of these disks, we have to set it to what the height of each of these radii are, which is y. So r in our formula will be y. Now when it comes to the disk method, since the disks are oriented along the x-axis, where they are vertical as opposed to being horizontal along the y-axis, dh will be with respect to x. So this is dx. Therefore, our integrand, our function that we're integrating, has to have the variable x. If that's confusing to you, let's start filling this in. The moment of inertia about the x-axis, which I'll represent as i subscript x, is equal to the mass, which I don't know, times pi, over 2 times the integral between, let's read this, 0 and 2. 0 and 2 for our function y to the power of 4 dx. I need to somehow manipulate my function so that it becomes y to the power of 4, and that's not hard to do. I can square both of these sides where I end up with y to the power of 4 is equal to 64x squared. And this is what I'll substitute into here, giving me i subscript x m times pi over 2 times the integral between 0 and 2 for 64x squared dx. Finding the antiderivative of this term is very easy. All you do is you add 1 to the exponent and take the sum and divide by 3. This gives us m pi over 2 the antiderivative of 64 x to the power of 3 over 3 when x is 2 and 0. When x is 0, well that becomes 0. When x is 2, 2 to the power of 3 is 8 times 64 divided by 3. 8 times 64 divided by 3 gives us that times pi divided by 2, times pi divided by 2, we end up with the exact same moment of inertia as when we did it with the shell method, which is 256 pi over 3, roughly equaling 268, and that is our final answer. Don't forget the m, because that was never given to us. And there you have it. That is how to compute the polar moment of inertia, this time using the disk method.